Good morning. Good morning. This is going to be a tough act to follow, but we'll try. <laughs> um, as Billy just said, my name is Alexis Gage, and this is my lovely wife, Emily. And we would like to thank you for the opportunity to share with all of you how we became members of this amazing congregation and how we have come to call Savannah our home. We are not originally from the South. We have lived in Savannah for a little over three years now. We came here so that I could take a job as a trauma surgeon at Memorial University Medical Center and Emily as a nurse. While these jobs keep us busy, and as a surgeon, I pride myself on never giving up, even on the worst of cases. Our church story was one of disappointment, disbelief, and defeat. My church story begins with my first home, the place where I was born and raised, which was New York City. I was raised a Catholic and grew up in a very traditional church-going family. We went to church every Sunday. My mom was a Eucharistic minister. My father was, was the church treasurer, my sister was a lecturer, and both my brothers were altar boys. The church and its teachings were very important to me growing up. I went to a Catholic college in Boston where I too became a Eucharistic minister and participated in many mission and volunteer experiences to spread the good news. But my faiths and beliefs came to a screeching halt when I finally admitted to myself that I was gay during my residency training. During a time when I needed guidance the most, I felt abandoned and confused as to how to reconcile my belief in a loving God who made everyone in his image and likeness, but that I somehow was a mistake and not allowed to be my true self. I stopped going to church, stopped reading the Bible, and basically accepted the fact that my lifestyle precluded me from having a church home and a relationship with God. I was born in New Jersey and was raised Lutheran my whole life. I was baptized, received communion, and confirmed all by the same pastor. I did not know that you could even choose a church. When it was time for me to go to college, I fell in love with a little Wesleyan college in West Virginia and studied nursing. I went to a few services there, but did not feel that's where I belonged. When I moved back to New Jersey, I tried very hard to find a new church as I moved away from my hometown. I even recruited my pastor to help me. Well, no one was him, so that was a bust. Then I met Alexis, and one of the first things we talked about was religion. When she said she was Catholic, my first thought was, oh great, now I have to go to a Catholic church. It's all the same G-O-D, but for me, it was not the structure I was comfortable with. Then we moved to Seattle for two years so Alexis could complete her fellowship. In Seattle, we tried several churches together and went to a beautiful cathedral whenever we could, but then it came out that they were completely unsupportive of a gay relationship, even though when we were looking up churches, they were listed under the friendly category, whatever that means. I mean, aren't all churches supposed to be friendly? But needless to say, we never went back to that church. When we moved to Savannah, we both missed church, and we decided to give one of the Catholic churches a try in town. However, over several Sundays, it became readily apparent that couples like us were not welcomed. There was no warmth in their greetings, there was no acceptance, there was no diversity. We continued to struggle with having a church home where we could be ourselves. At that point, we had pretty much given up on God and the church. Thankfully though, God never gives up on us. We went to the Savannah Pride Festival in 2013, never expecting a church to have a tent at this event. However, amongst all of the tents we visited that day, Asbury's tent stood out the most, and we left wanting to know more about this special place. Their beliefs that everyone is welcome and loved by God has stayed with us. And as any good surgeon would do, I sent my nurse in first to get more information. <laughs> Emily reported back that Asbury reminded her of the church and the pastor that she grew up with. No judgment and all accepting of you for whom you are. We then started going to Asbury together. From the moment we walked in, we received welcoming hugs from Bob. I listened to Billy's sermon without falling asleep post-call, and we were actually interested in God's word again. 
we found ourselves again praying at home together. After a few Sundays, we looked at each other and said this was it. We wanted Asbury to be our church home. I remember hearing one time during one of Billy's sermons that there are not coincidences, only God incidences. I had one such God incidence not too long ago that solidified that this is where God wanted us to be and this was the community that God wanted our children to grow up in. Emily had to work one Sunday, so I came by myself to this service. That Sunday happened to be the baptism of Clementine Braddock. I remember the beautiful service vividly. Emily was pregnant at the time, but we had told no one. She was still very early in her pregnancy, and we did not even know the sex of the baby yet. The congregation was singing God Loves You to Baby Clementine, and I had a vision when I looked up at Clementine's ba banner. For a brief moment, instead of her name, I saw the name Tyler George on her banner. With that vision, I knew we were having a boy, and I knew his name had just been given to me by God. I went home and did not tell Emily about this vision, but of course I bet her that we were having a boy. Shortly after that, during routine prenatal testing, we found out what I already knew. We were having a boy. I humored Emily and let her think of all other perfect boy names. Finally, I sat her down one night and told her the name that was given to him from God. She looked at me and said without a doubt that was his name. No other name felt right, and now that we know he is here, he is the perfect Tyler George. While pregnant, we attended new member classes, and that vision came to fruition when we had our son baptized here in this church last January. He now had his very own banner with the name Tyler George on it exactly as I had seen it before. It was a true full circle moment for me and solidified that we were now home. We support and worship at Asbury because it is a privilege to be a part of a faith community where they love you for being who you are, they welcome diversity, and they encourage growth through the word of God. And we hope you will do the same.